All right, what's going on guys? Thanks for stopping by my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over some of my favorite 70s style kind of retro-ish fonts. These fonts are great if you're doing like maybe a band poster or something like that. Uh, any kind of poster really. They're not like body fonts per se. They're more on the decorative side of things. So they'd be good for like headlines or anything like really funky that you're trying to do. As always, if you guys are interested in content like this, it'd be awesome if you'd subscribe to the channel or leave a like below and definitely leave a comment if you have any questions. Uh, another thing before we start is that these are all available through Adobe Fonts, so they're super easy to download if you already have the Adobe programs. However, you might have to do some searching to find these fonts if you don't have the Adobe Suite. But most of these fonts, if you type them into the internet, you can find at least some variant if you don't have the Adobe program, so, so don't worry about that too much. But it is nice to have access to Adobe Fonts, so it's super easy to quickly activate these. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's jump into the video. Ready for action. The first font family we're going to be taking a look at is Vibro Regular. So Vibro Regular is by the Signal Type Foundry. According to Adobe Fonts, Signal is a Dublin-based type foundry and drawing office specializing in type design, lettering, and typographic branding. I really enjoy this font. It's super thick, it's very punchy, and it's super unique that it's made up of a bunch of different lines. I could definitely see this used as like maybe a retro band poster, or maybe even like the logo for the band. I don't know, I'm super fond of this font. It's pretty quirky. It's not the easiest to read, um, so if you're going for readability, maybe not the best font to choose, but it's super funky and I'm a pretty big fan of it. Okay, next we'll move on to Manicotti Regular. I could kind of imagine it used as like a camping sign. It's kind of got that like retro clamping kind of feel to it. It's a super interesting font and it's one of the few serifs that I think really works well in terms of like 70s design. I think that a lot of times when you start using that 70s style design with serifs, they actually kind of start leaning towards more of like a a cowboy, uh, maybe western look, um, but I think that this one definitely fits within the 70s category and I'm a pretty big fan of how interesting it is. I love how thick it is on the top and the bottom, uh, but like with a really light delicate center portion to most of the letters. Okay, next we'll move on to Cheap Pine. Again, I think this would be a great one if you're branding like a campsite or maybe some camp related goods. It would be great for like a header or a logo if you're designing a logo. And I love 3D fonts, things that already come right out of the box, just kind of uh, look in 3D. I think that they kind of have a lot of punch and work great for titles. So uh, this is nice that it's already set to 3D. Okay, the next one we'll talk about is Balboa Plus. This is Balboa Plus, but specifically the gradient portion of the family. Uh, I'm a really big fan of this one as well. Uh, I feel like it's kind of got that like, it's it's still 70s style, but it almost has like a sci-fi-ish look since it has that, uh, you know, step value to it. So I could see it. Um, maybe used in like a 70s style video game. It almost gives me like Tron vibes, I would say. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely a pretty big fan of this Balboa Plus. It's a pretty good looking font. So the next one we're gonna take a look at is Platelet OT Heavy. For me, I feel like this could be used as like a subheader or something even. Um, definitely not a body font because it still is like a decorative font. You wouldn't probably want to read a whole paragraph of this. But if you're looking for something that could maybe be used as a subheader, it's still relatively readable. Definitely a solid 70s style font and I'm going to try to use it in some posters in the future for sure. This font has a ton of character and uh, definitely like a very strong vibe to it with that you know, curl that's on all the owls and the eyes. So next we'll move on to capital demi bold capitals. My favorite two letters in this font are definitely the Q and the P. The Q because it has that like, the tail of the Q is that little dot under it. It's just like so quirky and interesting. It almost gives the font like a floating feeling. It's a super interesting font, especially the P too. You don't see a lot of 70s style fonts kind of pulling off that like jagged edge where the P kind of slants down. It's got that point on it. But I think that this font pulls it off and maintains like a 70s style vibe. I also really like the ease with that bar offset towards the bottom. I think it kind of gives it again that like quirky floaty feeling. Uh, this is a really successful font I think and I definitely want to try to use it in the future. So next we're going to take a look at HWT Gothic Round Plane. This is kind of the one round font I threw in here. Uh, and it's also kind of more uh, compressed together I guess most of the other ones I chose are pretty wide but again I think this is something that could be used for sure in like uh, titling of a poster obviously like I've been saying with most of them and I could see it paired well with kind of like some pastel -y vibe colors uh, you know a little bit on the desaturated side a little bit lighter then the next two that we'll take a look at are muscle I like the muscle uh, the wide version especially, but I also like the muscle wide italic. The just standard wide version I feel like could be used more universally, but the uh, muscle wide italic I feel like could be used 
again in like almost a video gamey sci-fi type style 70s vibe um, usually when you think of 70s style fonts I feel like everybody thinks of the glamping kind of retro uh, hippie-ish vibes but I think that this also fits in a 70s vibe but in more of like a sci-fi tech way I'm a huge fan of the muscle font okay the next one is probably the most quirky out of the ones that I chose to put in this list uh, it is cottonwood standard medium it's very decorative I love the accents on the top and the bottom of each letter they almost look like little flowers but it's not too flowery where it's just like excessive and uh, looks like overly decorative. I think that that was super successful and still kind of minimal in the way that they integrated those like flowery elements. I could see this paired well with like maybe a green color palette, definitely, since it kind of looks naturey a little bit. But yeah, I love this font. It's definitely probably the most decorative I chose out of all these, but I think it definitely still fits the 70s vibe. Okay, so the second last one we'll take a look at is Cowboy Slang Expanded. So Cowboy Slang Expanded is kind of like that other serif font that we talked about where it almost borders the line between that, you know, western style vibe. But I think that it could still be considered a more 70s style one. Again, I could see this one used a lot in like some sort of camping sign or like camping related branding. Just general outdoorsy stuff. Okay, and then finally, for the last font, we're going to take a look at Hobo Standard Medium. This is actually straight from the Adobe Type Foundry, so it might be hard to find this exact font somewhere else on the internet, but uh, I do think it is a really nice font. It's one of the more organic fonts out of the ones that I chose. It kind of has a lot of character in the way that it thins and tapers out. Uh, again, this is a really cool font that I could also see used in like a camping style thing. Uh, I keep going back to that camping thing, but I feel like these days the most successful way that a lot of these fonts could be used are like kind of in the music industry or like camping outdoorsy related stuff. I think that those two categories really successfully use these 70s style fonts and just general 70s style branding. But I would definitely recommend these if you're trying to create a brand for something that is kind of outdoorsy or maybe even music related. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed these 10 fonts. Maybe let me know which one your favorite is in the comments below. And if this video helped you out at all, if you maybe got something out of it, it would be awesome if you'd leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps out the channel. And subscribe if you're interested in more content like this. Alright guys, thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Later.